go. Want to come on eSports TV. Uh, my name is Soji Fagade, and with me today I have uh, Chuma. Chuma is a resident guru. Um, Chuma, welcome. How are you? Oh, I'm very well, Soji. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody in Spurs land, uh, wherever you're watching from. Uh, welcome to Come on eSports TV. Thank you so much. Today's edition is packed, jam-packed with so much going on, so much. And uh, we don't even know where to begin. I mean, we have... Uh, we have, um, I think, Friendly coming up tomorrow, our last, or on Sunday, I think. It's either tomorrow or Sunday. Our last Friendly, it's Sunday, I think. Yeah, our last Friendly against Roma. Then, yeah, everything set up for season starts week after. And we'll also do a preview for the season, new season, aren't we? Because um, there's so yeah. much to look forward to this this new season. Everyone's really hopeful that um, Spurs are going to do. Call him Togo, you know, <laughs> the other great one. And having had um, uh, Jose with us for a while, I mean, obviously a great one. <laughs> uh, we have the other great one as well, so that's quite good. And uh, obviously, the match is, is spicy on 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 the basis of having. Um, uh, Mourinho be, be, be before uh, Conte, but I mean, if you look at past seasons, I think I've been to two, or, I think one or two preseason matches that we played Roma in the past, and um, we've always sort of dealt with them quite comfortably in most of those matches, if I recall. Um, so I don't expect it's going to be any different. There's also going to be the added element of us looking at Nicolas Zaniolo, one of the rumored uh, signings that we've, we potentially have uh, coming up. Now, I'm not even sure. I mean, how does that even look? Um, we'll come to the rumors, uh, rumor mill in, in a minute and see what, what that sounds like. But there's so much that we've, we've been linked with this season. If we look at the transfers, those who come in, and um, we're also going to look at uh, the potential folks that are going out as well. But let's just have a quick, quick, quick run through, I mean, of, of the rumors. Um, um, uh, we've got incoming. Uh, the main one that's been like the incoming one for us has been uh, Nicolas Zaniolo. And okay, we've been linked with Madison, we've been linked it with uh, Fekir, but the ones that seem to be sort of having plenty of um, chatter on the uh, in the no <laughs> community, if you like, has been Nicolas. Uh, what do you make of it's that? Zaniolo. Um, he's I I I I've, I've liked him for a very long time. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. Um. I, I don't know. He suffered an injury uh, about two seasons ago that's been it's affected his progress. He was meant to be Italy's main man. Okay. But then since that time, um, the young uh, junior Chiesa, Enrico Chiesa's son, uh, Federico Chiesa, has now become more the guy. He's taking the limelight that Zaniolo should have had. And he's moved to Juventus. So Juventus won Zaniolo. Zaniolo, from rumors, have it that he was a, as a Juventus fan as a child, and he'd want to go there. It's kind of like the Bayern Munich. Uh, it's kind of like the Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, Barcelona thing, where every player in their country wants to play for them. So Juventus have that kind of hold in Italy. And so it's us against Juve. In terms of money, we blow them out of the water. Oh, are you with them broke then? Can, but... <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're not broke. It's just Italian football. They don't, don't really, you know, the system um, Fabio Paratici is using at Spurs is the same system they use where they buy these players on structured deals, and you know, you loan, buy back. So they never pay fully. They have money, but they don't have serious money to pay in one go. Right, okay. If it was a one go payment thing, Spurs would kill them. Spurs would kill them. If it's structured, they always end up getting and it's the fact that like I said, the players all want to play for UV or Inter, kind of. It's like the whole yeah, because of the pedigree and, 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 and history and all that sort of thing, and chances of winning titles and, and, and prizes, right? Yeah. So yes. So yeah, so that's the thing I'm looking at that 
in a very strange way. I don't know how serious. He, he, like you said, he, his news of him has more traction than anyone else. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, the Italian players, I think after we got burnt with Bastoni at the start of the window, I, I'm not looking at Italian players anymore. You know, with that kind of eye. So I don't know. He might be another Bastonian side to stay in Italy. We haven't had that many um, Italians in the in the uh, in the league lately. I mean, we remember the days of Zola, um, Balotelli, and um, yeah. uh, Mancini. I mean, uh, apart from those, like what you might call those shining lights, if you like. I mean, I'm not sure well, I remember just... any other major Italian player that's come in uh, and made it mark in the league. There haven't there haven't been many. I think it's it's the way English football is generally it doesn't really appeal to the Italians as much. It's it's faster paced. It's not it doesn't have that their pattern football defensive counter attack. But now by having managers like Conte that play it, it can possibly have some kind of bearing. But on a normal basis, most of them like to just stay home. You know, Italian players really like travel into Europe. They, their teams, are, they just stay at home. They'd rather go to the big three and stay there than come out into Europe. You know, it's only very few of them that have really, really ventured out and then ventured out and made a success of it as well. That's another thing. Very few. Now, I mean, this, we're just looking at the room here for, for now in terms of um, um, those coming in. Let's have a look at our departures. And now, this is a, a, a sort of counterintuitive spurs because um in the past it used to be a question of us um having folks leave and then we're having difficulty with replacing them now it's the other way around we now have folks who come in we now have to get rid of um well not get rid but at least um balance the books if you like and and the way it is now it looks like we have a very very heavy um load of, of, of players in the squad, I, I mean, estimates are that um, we probably need to get rid of between seven and nine nine people um, before. The, I mean, by the end of the uh, transfer window. Now, I mean, obviously, the ones that seem to be um, at the top of most people's lips are, I mean, Lo Celso. I'm not sure he's going to make a comeback here. Um, he's at Villarreal, and I think he's doing quite well there, isn't he? So, he, so he's back. He's back at Spurs. He came back for the preseason training. Right. Um, he's at Spurs Law. He trains. He trains every day. But um, Conte has separated the training. So the players that are not really wanted, um, the Celso, Ndombele, Winks, they are not training with the, with the first main team. group. Okay. The first team. The first team squad. Um, Rodon is, Tanganga is, and Doherty and Royal are. So they are with the main group. But those those particular those three players, the Celso and Dombele and Winks, are, are training separately from the uh, the main the main group. And Lo Celso, Villarreal want to complete the deal, but as you know, Spanish teams outside of Barcelona with their miraculous money that they are making now that they are spending, that a team that can't afford to pay wages to their players somehow miraculously find money to buy Lewandowski, and I, read, Kunde, I read a piece about Rafinha. how they sort of pull off that um that's um that piece of um, magic if you like and the, what the way, the way it was crafted mm. was that okay it's a bit of a gamble for for the new president because it's a it's a um win or burst type uh, situation so what they've done is that they've sold their tv rights uh uh, the future TV, future ends on the TV rights, obviously for a discount, with a view to getting money in, and it's that gives them uh, the money that they need to spend now. But obviously, what that means is that potentially, if it does work, fantastic, because they win silverware, they get more, I mean, hopefully, sell more rights, but you can't sell the rights again. <laughs> Once they're sold, they're sold. So if you don't win, it's it's a real, yeah. real big gamble. So that, that's, 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 the, that's the real thing um, for, uh, for, for Barcelona. I mean, but, I mean, we'll see how it all unfolds. I, I just think that if we're not careful, we might have um, a Leeds 2.0 or Leeds 3.0, you know, unfolding across the, the, the leagues in, in, in the world because, I mean, they're always not going to affect these things under, you know, because if Barcelona are owing, I mean, close to 1 billion, uh, you know, they probably owe, own that, owe that to a lot of clubs, you know. Now, the domino effect of that is it's going to sort of be felt across, it's going to create ripples across the world of football, isn't it? 
Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so because of that, the, the landscape of uh, Spanish football, money-wise, is not... The, you rarely see teams that really splash out money outside of the top... I'll say the top three, Real Madrid, uh, Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, I'll put them in there. They're the ones that really spend the most money. And outside of them, you don't see people spending money huge. So Villarreal want La Celso. La Celso's loan, as you, as you, as you alluded to, was a complete success. They love him there. Emery wants to use him. But the issue now is they can only go, I think, as much as 20, 20 maybe 25 million euro, not even pounds. And um, I'm going for how much? How going much for what? 65 or how much? How much do you pay for him? Or 60 or thereabouts? We bought him for, I think we bought him for either 30 something or 40. Right, okay. Depends on how much we've paid on that. We, we, might, we might end so up losing something on that deal. No, I, I, we're, we're, I, think, I think Daniel Levy's resigned to making heavy losses on La Celso and Ndombele. Yeah, clearly. He's because, willing um, to, sw- he's no, willing no, to swallow it. Tangi doesn't seem to be in demand anywhere. He, and, you know, you know I, 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 I don't want to use this as a stick to beat him, but this just tells you you know, everyone talks about how gifted, how skillful he is. If you're that gifted, if you're that skillful and everyone can see it, you're off the market. Nobody talks about, you know, oh, I'm, this is my favorite uh, thing. In, 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 uh, this is my favorite food. And you don't buy it. They buy the food. It's things that people don't want that they're on the shelf. He's still on the shelf. Absolutely. And no one's made a move. So Absolutely. So, I mean, we have, we have a problem on our hands today. I mean, unless, of course... Um, can be a miraculous turnaround. I mean, I've, it's been known to happen in the past. Where I, I, folks have... my, 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 my prayer, my prayer is, uh, sorry for interrupting, my prayer is one of the Turkish clubs will come for him. Because those Turkish clubs, they always find a way to like get some money to loan players. So I'm yeah. guessing one of Galatasaray or Fenerbahce, one of them will just manage to come through and we can just shunt him there. Or one of the Italian clubs will take him on loan. And, yeah, let's, and let's, keep let's him wait and see. Wow. Yeah. Harry, Harry Winks. I mean, oh gosh, um, it's it's a bit of a. I'm a bit disappointed for him. Well, because there have been times in the past, well, on the porch, for instance, when Harry was doing quite well. I mean, I, I remember one particular match, a few matches against the two legs of um, a match against Real Madrid. Real you know, Madrid. he Madrid, yeah. really, yes, really I have, I have. that game. He, that was, I yeah. mean, for, for me, those are the top memories of of having um, having Winks in the yeah. team. Because he played really well in those two matches, you know. But I guess with with with, with uh, at this level, um, your consistency has got to be more than uh, uh, single or, or uh, a couple of matches. You need to be doing it week in week out. I'm not sure he's been able to do that, and he's got plenty of competition for places in that in that space anyway. So um, I'm afraid he doesn't have much of, of room to to maneuver in in that respect. That's such a shame, such a shame though. Um, Tanganga. Tanganga was um, touted as one of the upcoming prospects and for our youth team at, at the time. So him going away, um, he'll probably make some money on that one because he, we, didn't, we didn't pay any money for him. So like a youth development for us, isn't it? Yeah, same, same, as, same, as, same as Harry, Harry Winks. If I can just go back to Harry. Harry Winks' thing was, um, I don't know, you probably remember this player. I don't know if a lot of fans, younger fans, know who this is. There's a player called Ray Wilkins, whose nickname was the Crab, because everything he did was sideways. Yes. Harry Winks more or less became the Crab 2.0. <laughs> He's like Ray Wilkins. He just you can you you can bet your last pound that Harry Winks is going to go sideways or back. Yeah, that that, that oh, reminds me of Scott, 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 Scott Parker, eh? Scott Parker, you know, but Scott Parker was. We used to call him Mr. Mr. One Eighty because he always did one particular spin. Uh, yeah, he he was, exactly. Side. Turn around and go and come then back. Side. He always pass side, yeah, and then pass side. So you know, but Harry Winks is the games against Real Madrid. I think that's why I always said in my head that I think it would have been a good move if he had gone to Spanish league because there, there's a lot of time, there's a lot of room. Mm-hmm. Premier League is very, very aggressive, and it's, you have to think quickly. And if you're positive, you have to be very positive. And slowly it got to him. You know, they, you'd see him get bullied out of the ball. 
he doesn't dwell too much and then he's he's so scared of making mistakes and then the fans also turned on him so you could tell he, he didn't want to make any more mistakes in the future so mentally he wasn't there as well technically he can't play what Conte wants he's good but he's not someone that you can be paying money and keeping on the bench he's not an upgrade Benton Cole came I I say that Benton Cole personally for me has done in for in the Dombele, Winks, and Lacelso, because he has a boy who came in and he hits the ground running. He just functions well, you know. And yeah, because and of that, yeah, got Tanganga, about... I like, I like Tanganga. Yeah, go on. No, of course. Yeah, the amazing thing about Ben Tanko is the fact that he's settling so seamlessly, and he has such elegance on the ball, and he's so composed. He doesn't panic, you know. Um, you, he never, he doesn't make silly errors, you know, and he keeps it very simple. And he's always passing forward. He's always going forward, you know. He's, he can, and he can spot a pass, you know. That, that's the thing about him. He can spot a pass. And he's very, very strong in the tackle as well, you know, which is really, really good to have. In the tackle. So, yes, everything those guys should have been. Exactly. Everything yeah, so, they should have been is him. Uh, absolutely. So, so, so that, you look at it and, think, and then Bishuma um, coming in as well. Right. So, that, I mean. So, but Tanganga, I think, um, with Tanganga, I think, um, the I, I, like I spoke to you before we started the show, that the Italian move has been on for a while. Uh, rumors of him moving to an Italian club have been there for a while now. And he's just never really kicked on. I think it was a shame that injury affected him. But then also, too, I just don't think he's he's really there in terms of focus and everything as a centre-back for Conte. Which is very is very difficult to say, seeing that we have Davidson Sanchez. So I've always argued that Tanganga was better than Davidson Sanchez. But in a very strange way, I can understand why Conte keeps Sanchez. Because Sanchez can do certain things and keep it simple. He doesn't go beyond his his level, so to yeah, speak. He just but, he sort of plays plays up to his level. Yeah, you know, Tanganga doesn't... overplays, Tanganga misplaces passes too much. You know, and I looked at it and I said, you know, I can understand. It's the same thing as um, I just discovered that Rodon is on your list as well. Rodon is linked to a uh, loan to Red in France. So they're negotiating with Spurs right now. I just saw that on, uh, on one, of the, one of the blogs. All right. So, so um, well, I didn't, I didn't, um, one second. You have your Rodon there. You have Rodon down there. Right. Okay. On the wings. You have him on the wings. Ah, yes. Yes. So that that's yes, Rodon is um, another another departure. I mean, he didn't quite um, hit the ground running, did he? I think he's unfortunate. I think he's been very unfortunate in the fact that I don't think he's good enough. Because if he was good enough, he would have featured in the games when certain players were injured. He would have been, he would have slotted it. Instead, Conte said he was Dyer's replacement, and Dyer doesn't miss matches, you know, mm-hmm. and. He's just, he's just been very, very, very unfortunate. But I want to see what happens when he goes on. I don't know if they want to sell him or they want to see if he can play and then come back. I don't know what the club's plans are. But it's going to be a loan for now. So, Ren are in the lead at the moment. Fulham as well. The link for, for Ren in France. Right? For Roden. Yeah. yeah. I wish him all the best. I mean, yeah. um, he, had, he didn't quite... Um, he, yeah, he, he kind of error prone in my, in my view a few matches that he's in you know had yeah. a few hats hats in mouth moments you know when we had him on so well good luck to him um let's okay so and last on your list last on your list is uh Dorothy Royal Emerson Royal yeah so I mean, who, who goes up I mean if you had to sort of put, <laughs> put money on it who would you put your who, who, who would your money be on to to leave for me, my for me, it's Emerson, Emerson Royale. I would, I would, I would, I would, I would move him on, but I like both of them. But I can, personally, as a Spurs fan, as someone who watches a lot of football, I would have upgraded. I would have sold both of them and bought an upgrade. So Spence is already there. I would have still gone into the market and gone. Right now, the Inter Milan are doing a little mini fire sale. So they've got uh, the Dutch right wing back, Dumfries. He might be yeah. leaving Inter Milan this summer. I was like, I'll tell both Royal and uh, Royal and Dorothy and get him. Hold, 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 hold up, hold up for one minute, right? 
you think about it, right? So at the moment we have Spence, right? We have Royal, we have yes. uh, Doherty. Yeah. Now um, it seems like yeah. Mora is not going anywhere. Lucas isn't going anywhere, and um, it looks like um, uh, Don Conte, uh, 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 the other great one, is doing a a uh, Victor Moses on 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 on, um, on Lucas. Victor Moses, yeah. Now, yeah, if yeah, if he's able to convert Lucas into a successful uh, wing back, presumably we could possibly have um, Lucas and Spence and have both uh, Emerson and and Doherty leaving. I don't know. It's just a thought. I'm just you know. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, I I, I agree with you. I no, I've, I've, I've I, seen, I, I saw I saw uh, Lucas in in preseason. I had I don't think he did too badly at all. You know, in in that role, no. and he knows how to hurry. He's, clear. He's got a good pass on him. Well, he can cross. I mean, um... I, I, I think I think I, I think it fits it fits it fits Lucas's because we all know about Lucas. Lucas loves the run. With the ball. He <laughs> I know, right? Just take the ball and just go. We, so we, in that we position, call him we call him. Uh, he, go, he runs into call, call the sack sometimes, you know, and he oh, just Mr. runs. Mister Call the sack. Yeah, exactly, exactly. He wants to run and and he has the freedom and because he's an attacker. I think you would understand how to show up. And he's a good finisher, let's be real. Like inside the box, Lucas finishes well. Yes. It's when he tries all his outside of the box, he always gets blocked or he misses sometimes. Apart from that wonder goal he scored uh, last season against, I think, Brentford. Or yeah. was it Norwich or Brentford? He spun that ball. That was beautiful. But he can get into those positions that Correct, yes. Conte likes and score. So I give him that. I don't know about his crossing, but he's played as a right winger in his lifetime for PSG and West. So he's okay crossing wise. I think he's better technically than Doherty and Royal crossing and everything else. He's better than both of them. So yeah, him and Spence would be an interesting uh, it would be an interesting thing. But yeah, I, I I see that. And then yeah, if they both go, I, I still see Spurs buying one more defender. I don't know if it would be a right wing back or a center. I think a center back. If Rodan goes, I think and Tanganga, I think we will buy one more centre back. I don't know who that would be. But I think somewhere along the line, leading to that end of the transfer window, we're going in for another defender, at least one more defender. So, yeah. Now see. the the difficulty for for a manager is is how she, how you sort of uh, make that decision because on the one hand you you want a squad that is strong, you want a squad that can sort of um, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, stay the course for the season, you know, because we're going to have so many games uh, over the course of the season. We're going to have um, uh, Champions League matches. We're going to have, um, and depending on how far we go in those competitions, you know, um, um, we need the depth of the squad to um, actually cope across the season. I think for the very first time, if we have a look at what what we have as a team, I mean, if we let's just have have a quick look at what what, we, what we've done. I mean, the, what the done deals are so far this season now yeah. for the very first time we've got six signed six six people signed up by pre-season that, yeah. that's that's i mean i i know i keep re- repeating this and i'm saying how how much <laughs> may have kidnapped uh um, daniel levi or if someone has this nude somewhere you know <laughs> and it's blackmailing him and making him sign all these checks and uh, sanctioning all these deals daniel, you know, daniel. Totally, totally uncharacteristic daniel. <laughs> or out of character so well, we, we we love it. I mean, us as sports fans are happy that we can we can actually have a team, you know, that actually looks quite strong. I mean, uh, on paper, I think the key for us. I'm pretty sure that I mean, uh, what um, Antonio is saying to them in the dressing room is that look, you guys haven't won anything. You know, you guys still need to go out there and do the business. You know, on paper you look strong. All it just means is that you become a target, don't you? Because uh, in the past, people never really rated us now. But now, with this squad you have, people are going to begin, begin to take notice and, 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 and come and play you like every match is a cup final. You know, So you've got to be ready for it and, and, and do the business. I mean, we have what? Bisuma. <laughs> I mean, I, I just watched him in, in Brighton last season. I think he probably was the top player, if you like. You know, um, If you add... Kukurela, what's that guy's name on the? Is it? Is it? Is it uh, I don't know. How to yeah, pronounce. Kukurela. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Kukurela is. Kukurela. I mean, the, the the left wing back. I mean, he is such a good player, isn't he? You know, 
Um, if we could have him, I, I mean, but we have so many people on the left already, so it would be difficult. So I even forgot to add Regulon to that list, you know, the list of people that like, were leaving. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Regulon, yes. Regulon is another, another name that's been linked to Barcelona now. So, yeah, so that's, um, that's another... Um, well, he came in on a very, very good um, good uh, turn of form, form when, when, when he started, but somehow he seemed to have lost that initial impetus that he had and that initial drive. I mean, yeah, I don't know what's going on out of him. Is it that he can't play in um, in contest system or what, what has happened? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's a system thing more than anything else. Um, Ponte from what we've seen, Conte requires his wing backs. And and the, 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 the funny thing is, Regulon made this, he actually said that in a in a in an interview when he when Conte first started. He said, Oh, Conte wants him to Conte told him your job is to arrive at the end like a striker. Hmm. And during the course of the season, I, I I was observing that, you know, Conte's football was always keep them busy on one side. So the wing back on the other side is creeping behind and then he will come in and and Take part, and Kane got. There was a particular game where Kane got him in three times. Yeah, and three times. Regulon flopped his lines, and I looked yeah. at the camera. And he's, to and he's caught one one particular one on that on that on him. that play. You know, I can't remember which match it was that he got he got into that exactly. position and scored. Yes, he's, he's, he's yeah he scored against Everton. It was the Everton. It was a five uh-huh. year. Yes, at, uh, Everton at, match. Yes, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. But but yeah, you found, and then he was he was very reticent to cross the ball he would always hesitate to like put in a first time ball mm. now that one across he was always pushing it too far but when session would come in session would just do it exactly how it's meant to be but session's problem was consistency and injury session yes. would play a couple of games and then he'd get injured but he was doing what conte wanted and you could see that to do. he's a rough diamond but he's someone that can be yeah but we're regular on who i felt should have grasped the role better than anyone else he just seemed to struggle. He was like he was overthinking. He was overthinking. He was showing up. He wasn't. He wasn't effective in the box. And I looked at. It, I said, "This guy won't be long for. It will not be long for Conte playing like this." He's a great. He's a very good player. I mean, we really like him. I think he's an excellent left back, attacking left back. But for what Conte wants, he's not. You know, he's not. He's not exactly suited. Going to your list of the done deals, Bissouma, Foster, Longley, Perisic, Richarlison, and Spence. Yes. You know, literally, if you look at it for the first time in a long time, we have two for each position. Absolutely. Right now, Spurs squad. We literally have almost two, two per position. And that is required. Not two, one very, very highly rated, the other poor. Yeah. They, so they just we'll even come back, We'll come back to that in, in, in just a minute. Before, but before we do that, let's just have a look at um, yeah. the, 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 um, the, the done deals in, in full, right? So we have Bisuma, like I said, I mean, great player, um, good deal for us, for us as well. We, what, 25 million pounds? Yeah. I think that's, that's the steal, I mean, for, for a player of that caliber and with, with premiership experience as well. Now, and um, playing under Graham Potter, I think um, it's, it's, it's good for him and also good for us as well. And um, he did he did do quite well for for them last year. I mean, I'd never really seen Foster play. I think the only sort of, um, what I know is that he used to play for Celtic and that, you know, <laughs> it was Celtic, he was his love keeper at some point and uh, he got a bit of pelting <laughs> at the match when he came on <laughs> against Rangers. Uh, Rangers surprises yeah. There, you know? <laughs> yeah, so that, 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 was, that was quite funny. Uh, Longley, Longley, hmm. um, Barcelona. Some people say he's not that great. Some people say he's, he's very good. What do you think? I I like I like Longley. So have you uh, have you seen Longley, him play? I've seen him play. I saw him play. I saw him play when he was in France, and then when he moved, he moved to Sevilla. Right. And he moved he moved to Sevilla, and he was playing in a back three, so, and he was excellent. You know, for Barcelona, to, Barcelona splashed out a lot of money. I think I think he cost them like anything upwards of thirty-five to forty something million. At the oh time. wow! And and he started playing. His first season was excellent. The problem he he encountered at Barcelona was the change of managers. He was bought by one manager, and by the time he looked and turned back, two more had arrived, and then now so he lost his confidence. He moved from a back three to a back four. They kept on shifting him about, and he lost his confidence. And he 
stopped playing as much because Barcelona already bought Umtiti. They bought several defenders at the same time. Even Yerimina that's at Everton. Now, all these guys came in in around the same period. So you're not guaranteed playing time. Then they just thrust you in and expect you to shine. And he lost his confidence a lot. But the mark of the man is the French national team, Didier Deschamps, still picked him for the squad. And then he played in the last, uh, in the Euros. He came on, I think he played two games in the Euros. So he's someone that he's, he's good. He just needs the manager to have confidence in him. And he will surely come good. I, I think he will come good. I'm, I'm very hopeful for him. So we'll see how the season yeah, I mean, I, I I hope so too. I mean, um, uh, we need a a, a a a very balanced squad. I think, if, like we said, we were talking about about squads in a minute, but we'll come back in, to the squad thing in in, in in a few. Um, but if you look at Peric Perisic, I mean, for me, that's probably one of the most experienced players we have on the field now, um, because he's 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 been there, done it, got the experience, and um, yeah, he's been a winner as well. Um, he's won with Inter yeah. Milan. Um, and he's done. He's done. He's done the business um, at at the top level. Uh, and everywhere yeah. he's gone. So for me, it's a it's a really really key acquisition for that role. And it's also, um, I think it's a good good um, mentor if you like for for Sessignon, uh on that on that left wing. So that, that's a tough signing for us. And guess what? I mean, and we got it on the free. I mean, that's that's <laughs> such a, a super deal for us as well. So. Yeah, that, that was quite good. Uh, that's uh, I, we need to give part part uh, credit for for his uh, business uh, this summer. Now, Richarlison. Now, Richarlison, uh, for me, I I like him. I like him because he's very tenacious. Um, I think he would do well in a good team. You know, um, if 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 he has a negative, is that he spends so many chances before he scores goals. You know, so um, but I mean that's that's a striker's job. They, they, as long as you keep 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 um, trying, keep uh, taking the shots, and you know you 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 make good after some time. As long as you're not, um, um, uh, we've had um, um, uh, disappointments in the past, like Jan Jansen and um, what Soldado, uh, who didn't really do the business for us. But I'm not sure. I mean, Richardson is. A different level above above those, not not in the same league at all. So I think we've got a really good acquisition there. Um, if you can sort of uh, up his uh, conversion ratio, that will be really really good for us. What do you reckon? Yeah, I I, I I agree with your sentiments. Um, for me, I wanted him to move when he when he played for Watford, the season where he came in and played for Watford. I think Poch yeah. was still in charge. I, I I was I was raving about him. I was like, look, we need to get this guy. We need to get this guy because I think his best position is where Son's playing. So I think he's better left coming in. He's a like a wide forward coming in on his right foot from the left, same as Son. Mm -hmm. So I think he's better there than playing on the right, even though he can play on the right where Kulusevsky does. And then he can still play forward. But I think his best position is where Son is and possibly playing with two as a as one of two strikers. So hopefully... Kane and him, or you think he can play up top on his own like Kane does sometimes? I, I, I think he can, but I don't know if he will convert as much as Kane playing up top by himself. I don't, I don't think he will have that same level. But I, I'm hopeful. But I think if he plays off either Son or Kane, I think he will score goals. I think he will score goals. But he's, for me, he's yeah, he's he's the kind of guy that's maybe one in three, one goal every three games kind of guy. Yeah. If he can up that a bit more, he would be. But he's, he's, he's to me, he's a good acquisition. And I, and we're saying this, we don't, we just don't know if, unfortunately, one of those front three players goes down. I think he will take his chance because it's a World Cup year as well. He's looking it, to impress this, and this become Brazil's number nine. I mean, um, we'll, we'll come to the, to the to the next match and we'll sort of try to predict what the um, starting lineup will be um, very very shortly. But. Um, well, for me, I mean, if you if you look at the squad now, okay, you now have Bisuma, Foster, Langley, Perisic, Richarlison, who we think can play better off suited where Son is. So chances are he may not even start, you know, uh, for most matches anyway. And when he does come on, he can either come on for Kulichewski or come on for, for, for Son. Or in some matches, they might decide to start him instead of silence Kulichewski, you know. Um, but it's it's a strong front three, 
that we we have at the moment. Now, if we have a look at Spence, I mean Spence for me um, is a bit of an unknown quantity because he doesn't have Premiership experience. Um, he's played very well in um, in the in the Championship, but the Championship is a different ball game from the Premiership. Do you think he'll 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 make that transition, or how well do you think he'll do? I I, I think he'll smash it. Maybe that's that's just me, and I'm very optimistic. But I think he'll smash it because he has several chips on his shoulder. So if you notice, if you notice, if you've noticed the tra- any pictures from training, you always see him and Cessignon together. So that's- him and Cessignon were in the youth team at Fulham. Right, that's true. Yes. Yeah, that's. Um, I remember there's a. We were, we were full when... together, and he got cut. He got. He got. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was yeah he got cut. Went, when, when so he lost his Premier League. Well, they were come home, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, so plenty of good good things. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good, good, so he... um, when you've got a team that has um, established players, players who are like really top notch, it's very very difficult for the younger young kids to break through, right? And so, which is why the loan system is in place to obviously go out and blood them, get them the experience. And um, we've seen examples of where it's, it's worked very well for us in the past. I mean, we've seen the Kane. Kane is a classic example. You know, he's gone up on loan several times and um, he had his break uh, under uh, Tim Sherwood. And um, the rest is history. Um, last season or two seasons ago, we had um, uh, Skip uh, out on loan as well um, in, in Norwich. And he did really good things there. He's been brought back and it's been really, really good for us. So that's, that's for me, obviously, it's testament to the how well the loan scheme uh, uh, seems to work for, for, for some players. However, for every skip or for every um, cane, we have several who don't even make the grade in the end, you know, and they keep going from loan to loan. And we never hear of them afterwards. I mean, I, I know a particular striker uh, who used to be with Spurs in, in, in the academy. And I know him because I know his dad very well. Because his dad used to, uh, he and I used to, uh, kind of, we, we were like uh, neighbors in the same business center. And um, Jonathan Obiku, I think, if I remember, is, um, is it Obiku or Obiku? I'm not even sure. Um, Obika. Obika. Obika, yes. Uh-huh. John Obiku, uh, Ob- Obika. And he's, he, was, he was touted at the time that he was going to be, do great things. Um, in the future, but it just never happened for him. Now he's playing it, for Mokham, right? Um, in the lower league, in League One. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and he's thirty now. I mean, he's a, just a little bit older than than um, than Harry, you know. So it's amazing how these things work. And there's so many people like that who we just never hear of again, you know. Um. So that's that's a bit that's a bit of a gamble that that uh, um, players have to sort of um. Uh, deal with it, and if you also think about it, right? That in 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 the Premier League, Premier League represents maybe a very very tiny minuscule percentage of actual players who actually play in the whole league. You know, so it's if you have, if you if you play regularly in the Premier League, you are at the top of your career. You know, it's so yeah, it's it's a um, it's a privileged position to be in for 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 them and for and for us who are uh, fans who who watch them uh, week in week out. Now. Let's have a quick look at our squad, and then, I mean, you and I were talking about about this earlier on about uh, how how well we've come. I mean, if you if you look at all the positions that we have in the team now, and uh, everything seems to um, be well taken care of. I mean, as in every position. Um, let's look at the keepers. Let's start with the back on the back. Do you want do you want to go first, uh, Chuma? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so we still have uh, Hugo Hugo Lloris, who is um, French captain, excellent shot stopper. I think his shot stopping has never really been in question. It's other things with his game that we think over the years. I, I would like to think that he hasn't been pushed for his position. That's my view. I, my view has always been that Lloris was undisputed number one, and because of that. He's never really had to fight for his shirt. So over time, you know, you, you get into a sort of comfort zone. And then by the time we had replacements, the replacements were never as good as he was. So he always knew he would get back into the side. Yeah, we had, we had a Gazaniga at one point who was like pushing him a little bit for his spots. I mean, um, but he didn't, like, 
it didn't quite pull it off. Yeah, oh, 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 yeah. Ultimately, Gazaniga wasn't as good as he was. We we've always said on I think we always said even on the on the group how it would be nice to get another number one, someone who is a, who has a number one mentality to push Loris and then possibly push him out to the team as well, if possible, you know. But Hugo is still he's still to me a very excellent keeper. Um, I, I worry when the ball is at his feet sometimes. Oh, yes. Well, I think, that, think that's, that's possibly, that's possibly who Hugo's biggest um, uh, failing or, or, or what, what do I call it? His, uh, his biggest um, um, uh, negative attribute, if you like, you know. Um, he just can't seem to play the ball. He seems to panic when the ball comes to him at his feet, <laughs> you know. And, uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, and then, and then Foster is not um, not not that great. I don't know much about Foster. Do you know anything about him at all? Yeah, I I oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I know I've known Foster. Like people forget Foster was an England international. You know, did he, is it the same Foster that we used to play for Foster, Southampton? Foster, he used to play for Southampton. Foster Foster was one of those keepers that there was a whole bunch of young keepers that came through, even though he's in his 30s now. Like, 10 years ago, it was him and I'm trying to remember the other guys that all came through. They all made England. I think they were, he's been to a World Cup or Euros in England as well, Foster. And he was fighting for his position. And in the end, Pickford came through. And oh, Pickford yeah. just more or less Listen. kicked all of them off. But it was, there was a certain period himself... Um, the guy who plays for Crystal Palace, Jack Butland, that's him. Ah, Butland, Butland yes. Foster, Pickford, all of them are all in rotation and Nick Pope. They were all in rotation for England and Pickford just came through and Pickford got the shirt for himself. But Foster was good. I think Foster made some mistakes with England and then his confidence left him for a period. And he moved to he moved to Scotland. And then now he came back with Southampton. So he's a he's a very good keeper. He's a very good keeper. He's someone that is very underrated. And but I think he's someone that can come in. I think he's he's of a similar level to what Liverpool have. Liverpool have um, Adrian, who used to play for West Ham. I don't know if you remember him, the, yeah. the goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. And he he comes in for he comes in for Allison. So he's not as good as Allison, but he's good enough. Foster is not as I won't say he's as good as Loris, but he's good enough. He's actually very. He's actually a very good keeper. He's competent, and that's what I think you're looking for in a number two. You can go with youth for your number three keeper. So I think they'll probably keep Austin, or I think there's another young man, Alfie Whiteman. I think those ones to stay in as two and three, uh, as three and four or three. Right. But Foster, Foster is decent. He's, he's quite. He's decent on his feet, with his feet as well. So yeah, I will. I, I would say him. He's okay. All right, if you're joining us for the first time, this is Common Youth Sports TV. Uh, Common Youth Sports TV is a regular uh, channel or, or podcast where we broadcast everything to do with Spurs. And if you haven't been here before and you need to so subscribe to our channel or if you need to get notified anytime we go live, uh, please click on the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And uh, if you also need to get notified, like I said, uh, click on the bell button uh, for notifications. Right. Moving on very, very quickly. So, um, uh, wing, so let's have a look at the, the back three, right? So the back three, starting back three for me would be um, Rome- Romero will be my number one on that list, right? Um, I would have um, Dyer and then I would probably go for uh, Davis as my starting back three. Now, for me, Davis is like the the what I call um, yes the quiet captain who captain material who just goes about his job and does just exactly what he's told to do. It's effective. He may not be outstanding, but he's always very very effective and it's very reliable. You know for being a, a team member effective and, and just does what he's meant to do okay um he may be out of position sometimes makes a few errors here and there but they're becoming fewer and fewer and far in between um i know that on on our, on our forum there are a lot of people who don't rate him you know and who consider that um 
He's like um, the classic um, teacher's pet in, <laughs> in in a team, and that <laughs> the only reason <laughs> he's in the team is because the coach likes him, not because of his ability. You know, well, coaches don't do they don't they don't do funny, they don't do um, sentiments. They just do what is best for the team. And if coaches in and out and consistently pick him, they've got to be seeing something that we as um, punters or fans don't see. So I mean, I would. I mean, I I, 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 don't, I don't mind. I don't, I don't mind Davis at all. You you you're going to say something that. Um, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. I was I was go- I was go- I was going to agree. I was going to agree with your point. He came from Swansea, where he had. Um, I think he was still in that. He was. I think he'd broken through when Michael Laudrup was their coach, and then I can't remember who else was coach again. After either Roger, someone else was in there that was quite good. Then he moves on to Tottenham, where he plays under Pochettino. He plays under Mourinho, and now he plays under Conte, and all three guys like him. Yeah, it's it's no coincidence. It's I, no coincidence I, at I, all. I, I, I've, I've, I've read the hate on Davies. As a left back, he is just a functional left back. He does what it says on the tin. Absolutely. I go forward. I cross if I can. I stay back. I defend. Simple. He's not flashy. He's not. He has no flair. He just does the job. Coming in as left wing, the the person who he's compared to under Conte is uh, Aspilicueta at Chelsea. Aspilicueta as a right back was not a flashy Spanish right back. He was just a regular right back, but he was very defensively sound. Yep. Once Conte came and made him a right centre back, everyone was like, oh my God, Aspilicueta is amazing. No, he's always been that guy. And Davis times his runs very well. So no, Davis to me, I think Conte, if you ask him, Conte will tell you this guy, and he's a soldier. He's one of those guys you just need to have in a battle. He's not the flashiest killer. He's not this. He's not that. But he will do the job. And in football, that's all you really want. Yep, you need someone who can do a job, and um, he he does a good job for us. And I think that's why a lot of um, um, coaches like him. You know, I I I, yeah. I I rate him highly as well because um, he's very very effective. You know. I remember one match last season, one particular match. Uh, it was, I think it was against Leeds, you know. And in that match, Leeds had a, a scoring opportunity. and Oh, yes. And it was like dead, dead certain to score, you know. And I don't know where that tackle, tackle came from. You know, a lot of other himself, players will have, yes. will have given up, you know. But not... Um, not um, Davis. Uh, uh, not our man. Davis. He came he in like yeah, he and just himself. put in a... And amazing block, amazing block. You know that that was um, something, something Our special. You know, I remember it very, very well. You know, yeah. So yeah. So yes. let's look at um. Very, let's look at um. Romero. Romero for me is Romero. Oh. Romero is a beast. You know, <laughs> he's a rose rose of a defender. You know, he's he gives everything. You know, and um, I think strikers will fear him because. <laughs> I remember one one match in part. I can't remember the exact match, but he made two, you know, bone crunching tackles that resulted in the goal. I think we scored a goal out of his moves. It was, it was against Leicester. Ha! Ah, you know, it just two bone crunching tackles, and they were fair and legal tackles. And um, you know, he just bulldozed his way through. And you know, he's such a good player. I love him. I love his heart. You know, I I I I, concur. I, I, I would like to say um. At this moment, a big shout out to Mr. Gamble on the Nigerian Tottenham group because Mr. Gamble is very skeptical of new players. And I remember when Romero came in, he was quite skeptical about he called him know, average. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, he, he, he didn't call him average, but he was okay. like, oh, you know, this and that. He hasn't. But one thing I love about Mr. Gamble, which I think a lot of people do, is He's very, very quick to raise his hand and say, oh, well, yeah, you are right. He's and admit, and admit and, when he's wrong, right? Admit that he's wrong, and that is a huge thing for a person. So Romero came in. A lot of people hadn't seen him. So as you know, I have I have football is my, my little mini addiction from everything else. The world has me. But football for me, so I watch copious amounts of football. It's, mm. it's, not, it's not healthy sometimes, the kind of football I watch. I can wake up at 2 a.m. to watch... 30 minutes of a game. So I watched him at Atlanta in Italy. Yeah. And I said, there's this guy. And I didn't know he was Argentinian at the time. I thought he was Italian. I said, why isn't this guy broken into the Italian team? 
all of a sudden, I, I watch an Argentinian game to watch Messi because of our other brother, Mr. Zeus. <laughs> Zeus. I always watch Messi because of Zeus. And, uh, and I'm watching this was, game and I'm seeing all my brother. biggest brothers. Messi fan, eh? Yeah. And then you find out he's also a Juventus. So he was still owned by Juventus. Wow. So Atalanta never really bought him, bought him. They did that same loan thing. Yeah. So they ended up in Juventus and then selling him on to Spurs. Which is kind of funny. So Juventus has blessed us three times. Bentanko, Kuliseski and Romero. If you I really think that want to several times we tried to buy Dybala off them and they kept on messing us about, you know? <laughs> you know, they, they've made up for it. They've made up for it. Now, but Romero is, he's very good on the ball. That's something people don't, don't understand. He's, very, he's a good passer. Yeah. He can bring the ball out. I, I have this feeling that he, he thinks in his head he's a midfield player, an attacker sometimes. He can bring a ball out. He can make passes ferocious tackler and he he takes pride there's time when he tackles people and he talks to them like he's really so, intensely telling them you think you can go past me you, you know who i am you? <laughs> you know it, it, and, and that's where, and that's where the, the love affair with richarlison started richarlison and him have had history that's exactly you know, i, I mean there's that yeah. uh, little post i had about him and richarlison hooking up and he went up to say hello you know <laughs> yeah you know, it, it was it was it was the, it was the, it was like the whole cafeteria stuff yes everyone just everyone was like clapping because it's it's he he dealt he dealt i think his whole mindset is he tries to own the striker he wants to own you he wants you to think twice before you come again and you start to see them when he's tackled them once once or twice they start hesitating when they come near him even you watch the liverpool uh -huh. players same thing like, they hesitate so it's once, been, once it's you been, put yeah. that, that fear in in a in a in, yeah. in, a, in a striker, you're, you're more or less yeah. halfway you're halfway through, you know. Yeah. So he's 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 a he's a rock. He's a, I, I would say this if if he masters the English language, I, I I can honestly say this if he masters the English language and he's he's very good at talking, I think he could become a Spurs captain. Honestly, that's that's how much I rate him. I know we have several players in there, that, but I, I would rate him as a captain because he's that kind of guy. He can he can scream his defense into action. So, yeah, yeah I think he's he's very necessary, very necessary. And I, we we've sort of overlooked Dyer a bit, but I think no, Dyer for Dyer, me has Dyer, found that position. Dyer is for me is probably the most improved player in that squad. You know, um, I mean, over the last season, he's been phenomenal. You know, and I mean this. Preseason, it's it's called a fantastic goal, and he almost got oh, another okay. one at, at the last match, you know. Yeah, and yeah. that tells me that I come from confidence, you know, because yeah. you don't even yeah. get into that position in the first place if you don't have the confidence to want to go forward and and, and take the shots, you know. So I mean, I think Conte has done a good job in building his confidence. So we're we're really, really, really blessed. No, now in terms of cover for those three positions at the back, so we've got Langley. We've got um, uh, Sanchez, and who's the third person? So at the moment, at the moment, you still got Roden there. So right, Roden, okay. that's why that, that's why I keep saying Roden and Tanganga are there for the moment. But I think if both of them go on loan, I think Spurs will buy an extra centre back. So what happened to that um, Inter Milan guy that we were all? Is it Bremer or what's the name um, that we were all chasing over this over the summer? Um, Bastoni, 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 Bastoni yes. yeah, Alessandro Bastoni. Yeah, Bastoni decided to, he's, he's, he's kind of like, he's Harry Kane, he's one of our own. He's one of our own inter version. All right, okay, right. It would have been extremely, it would have been extremely hard for him to leave. He would have, he would have left if the, the club wanted to sell him, but at the same time, they were trying to sell uh, another defender we tried for last year. I don't know if you remember, two, or Joey Mourinho, a guy called Milan Skriniar. Yes, I heard, so I heard about him at the time, yeah, but two, three years. It, it didn't materialize, did it? It didn't materialize. So they were planning, Inter needed the money. Inter, Inter uh, their Chinese owners pulled out because the Chinese government and some dealings, they've told a lot of their foreign investors to pull out of things, sporting things. So they pulled out, so they're having money problems, so they're trying to sell a defender. So the rumors were they were planning to sell Bastoni, then they tried to sell Skriniar, Whichever one, the money would come through first. But then Bastoni was so reluctant. And then it got to the point where I think it became so... It, it came so out in the open that the fans were looking at this one of our own. And so the club looked at it politically. They couldn't really force him out. as They would have forced him out, but they couldn't. And he ended up staying. So now Skriniar is the one that they're selling. But ironically, 
I think Skriniar is the better defender or, or the more useful to Inter than Bastoni. But money coming for him, they want about 60 something million. So they were negotiating with PSG, but PSG don't want to pay. Chelsea now are so desperate, so Chelsea are going in. But yeah, it's, it's Bastoni. I think we will revisit Bastoni next season. I honestly believe that he's someone that he likes Conte. He's a Conte fan. Um, Conte made him what he is. Conte blooded him. And he loves the guy, but he just is he's loyal to his club. And you can't knock a man who is loyal to his football club. So, you know, well, I think next summer. Yeah, yeah amazing. Now, um, I'm just going to sort of do something, which I know we have... Um, we have um, is it tomorrow, uh, our next match against Roma? I, I think I, no, I think it's two days from thirty first. Is it thirty first on, right? on Sunday? Right, on Sunday, right? I think it's Sunday. So we have we have a match against um, uh, Roma in high high fair and uh, in 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 in, in, um, in Israel. Now, I would possibly um, go with. Uh, let's have a look. Um, I would possibly go with the same starting lineup that we had um, in our match against. Um, this is this is the starting lineup we had against um, um, against yeah. uh, Sevilla. Against right? Rangers. Or is it Sevilla? So against, okay. uh, against Rangers, sorry. Against Rangers, right? Against Rangers, yeah. This is Rangers. Yeah. So we had um, Loris. I would go. I'd probably go with the same starting lineup if I'm going to make any changes here at all. It would probably be chance. I mean, there for sorry, um, Davis for Sanchez. Yeah, but Dave, Davis Davis is still carrying the injury. Oh, is he? Oh, I thought, so I, thought I, I was told. Yeah, he still has the ankle injury. He's better now, but I don't know if they will risk him to start. I don't know if uh, Conte will risk him. Right. So, in terms of team news for the for for, for tomorrow for Sunday's match, so we have what? Um, uh, Bentacle. Sorry, not Bentacle. Uh, Davis carrying an injury, might not, might not make an appearance, but I heard he's trying yeah. to support. Um, Skip. Davis and uh, Skip, Skip as well. Skip yeah, has Skip a foot out. injury. Right. Skip has a foot injury as well. So um, I think this, this lineup you put up here, I would, I would, I would, I would put um, Spence okay. in place of uh, Emerson Royale. Right. I would put Perisic in, in place of Sessignon. Right. And yeah, I'll let you write I'll let you write like that. Okay. Those that are the sounds, those are two changes. Sounds, sounds like like changes. like like a, like a deep possibility. Yeah. So I mean uh, it's it's been it's been one of these really, really um lovely pre seasons we we've had. I think this last match is probably gonna be like the what you might call um the 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 last uh, the last big game and for me it has the spice of um uh, like we said, uh, the great one, <laughs> the other great one, <laughs> the great one, the great, the really great one, <laughs> the so, special yeah, one. And um, given the circumstances that he left us, I'm pretty sure he wants, he wants, he has a point to prove. You know, even though it's preseason, make no mistake, uh, he wants to win. You know, and uh, Don Conte isn't playing either. So prospects looking good for he's, a good match. You know, he's he's. If, if, with all things aside, you know, uh, a lot of people on the group think I'm very anti-Mourinho. They don't realize that I was possibly one of Mourinho's biggest fans up until Spurs. <laughs> up until he joined Spurs, I was a huge fan of Mourinho's. But I think he's turned this Roma side into a very... They're, they're really good. I've watched them. I've taken away all Spurs, any anti, anti-Mourinho, anti anything. Roma play, Roma play very good, tight food. And if we take this game seriously, like it will almost be the equivalent of a Champions League game for us, a Champions League kind of test for us. I think how we play in this game, it, it, it's still preseason, it's still getting your legs together and stuff like that. But if we take it seriously, I think I think I think we could beat them, and I think it will also help with sort of like the way the, the, the team is gelling, passing wise, movement wise, pattern wise. I think it will be a very good test. For them, but Roma are coming. I think Mourinho is not coming to lose to Daniel Levy. <laughs> He's coming to make a point. So it's actually I think we'll Saturday. It it's, not, it's not. It's not on. It's not on Sunday. It's it's Saturday. Okay, it's Saturday. Okay, Saturday. Okay. Yeah, it's tomorrow. Saturday. It's about seven fifteen. Um, British summer time. So yeah, so it's starting at seven fifteen. 
and then okay. we'll, we'll, if you join us tomorrow um, at 7.15, sorry, it's done at about 9.15, where we'll have post-match uh, review, I mean, so um, re- review and analysis of the, of the match, and then we'll also do a bit of a preview of the new season, you know, and see what our chances are for the next season. So we'll probably also do um, something to talk about what the what the uh, league positions. We'll try and have a bit of a um, what my call prediction on on league positions next season. We'll see what that sound, sounds like or where where we we'll, where we we'll see ourselves. And then also, I mean, yeah. this is going to be a live chat. We expect that we're going to have um, uh, plenty of um, people join us to to, to, I mean, to give us their views and. And, and, and live, live comments as well. So we very much look forward to seeing you um, all on uh, our post-match uh, uh, pre- uh, review tomorrow. And um, if you haven't, if you haven't been here before, like I said, this is Common Ye Spurs TV. Um, you, you subscribe to our channel um, by clicking on the subscribe button. And also, if you need to be get notified anytime we post a video, um, click on the. Uh, bell button. It's been a pleasure having you, Chuma. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you and, very much. Um, yeah, we look forward to see you uh, tomorrow at uh, uh, nine fifteen. Uh, take good care and God bless you. Bye bye now. Hold on. Uh, bye guys. Yeah, let me that. Yeah, that's it.